So one of the things that I've noticed with my boat is dealing with a battery that may or may not be fully charged. And one of the things that my dashboard does not provide is any information about the status of the battery. So for $5 on AliExpress, I've got a voltmeter that both gives you the actual voltage and also gives you an overall condition of the battery, which relates to that voltage, but obviously shows you where the voltage needs to be in order to have a healthy battery. Now, as we all know, batteries are 12 volts, but if your battery reports 12 volts through a voltmeter, that's actually unlikely to carry enough charge to get your starter cranking over. Um, based on what I've seen, the, the, the actual voltage needs to be something like 13.6 at a healthy charge. And that's what these colored bars do on this voltmeter here. So this is a really simple $5 gadget. I'm going to be able to place it on my, my dash and uh, I'll be able to check the condition of the battery at any time, which is going to be awesome for being certain about the condition of the battery rather than trying to start the boat and finding that the battery is flat or not. Um, also really useful if you've gone out somewhere and you want to know um, how much charge is left when you're out at sea or if you're using the battery for other things and you want to keep an eye on it. So there's a couple of ways that this could be added and integrated. I've decided to connect it to the um, accessory lead from the OMC remote which means that this will only be on when the um, when the uh, um, when the the engine is um, when the engine is on, or when the OMC remote's in um, accessory mode, um, some of my other um, devices in here, like the the, the fish finder uh, and the radio, um, they run independently. You can turn them on and off, irrespective of what's happening with the engine. Um, but as I'm using this primarily to check the status of the battery when starting. Um, and I can always hit the accessory to check the status of the battery at any time. That's what I'm going to do. That will mean that I don't have to have this running constantly. It also means that I don't have to flick a switch up there every time I want to check it. It will show me as I'm trying to start the motor. So what I have done is I've already drilled out in the fiberglass a hole. I think it was a 32 mil hole using a spade drill bit. Um, that went through really nice and cleanly. Um, there's a bit of a white mark there, but that's actually just dust. So that's all looking great. Um, I needed to pick an area. I did consider putting it up at the top here, um, but as the the top of the dash is up here, there's actually quite a lot of thickness to get through, so I decided that down the bottom is the best part. And um, this has just got a simple thread mechanism on the back um, that you can undo to take it off. I checked the um, the depth before, oh, I'm going the wrong way, I checked the depth beforehand. Uh, And this just plop, plops straight in there. Which will give me the readout that I need. And then obviously I'm going to do some, some wiring up at the back here that I will show you shortly as I go. Uh, I'm just using the old um, leftover um, cable from the trailer wiring. Um, I'll just pull two runs out of this. It's a very short distance. It's probably only, you know, a hand distance uh, in the back here from that to the, 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 the bar for the um, negative and positive terminals and the accessory. So it's going to be a very short run, so it's a very simple wiring process. Um, as you can see, these already have got uh, square spades on the back, crimp spades on the back that I can t obviously take off and use, and it's clearly marked with a positive and negative, so it's very straightforward install to do. I just need to check on what's actually happening at the back in the actual boat's wiring itself for what they're using for connections, which I will do shortly. Alright, so having a look under the, the dashboard, obviously this is where the um, voltmeter is going to come through. I've got a, a ground, I wouldn't even call it a bus bar, I guess like a bus pole. It's pretty heavily stacked at the moment. Um, I'm going to see if I can add one more to that, and then I need to start investigating these cables here and these cables here, along with the manual that I've got to identify what's happening with the uh, accessory lead uh, to make sure that I, I tap the right one and I use that. Um, and that'll give us um, the power that we need at the right time. So let's start by getting the negative terminal sorted and then I can start finding where the, the accessory lead runs and getting that wide up as well. Alright, so my testing with the multimeter showed that purple is one of the cables that is uh, providing a charge when the ignition switch is on, um, which is what I need. Uh, the, that's pin 1 
Pin 8 also has a charge at that point. Um, I've done some reading online and had a look, and purple is definitely accessory 1. Uh, they may have more than one accessory, so I'm using accessory 1. I've done a piggyback on the side. That's the cleanest way. It does a pretty quick splint through the purple, and it allows you to connect a, a, a wire of um, different thickness. So I'm now just going to put the crimp on the end of this, plug this into the back of here. I'm going to kill the, uh, kill the um, accessory switch now so we don't short anything out. And uh, and then hopefully we'll see the uh, the the item uh, the voltmeter spring to life. All right. All right. So that's all wired up around the back. Let's give it a turn over and see what happens when I fire the ignition. Yep, that's bang on. So we're getting a reading now. 12 volts exactly. Um, there's a little red light on it, which I think is telling us that it's not quite high enough. This is probably not high enough to turn over. So you can see the bar chart is sitting up here, so really we want to have it in the green. You can see it's dropping off as we're sitting here, which I guess shows the battery is uh, struggling quite a lot. It'll be interesting to see if I fire up the radio, see that dropping even more. Um, so yeah, this battery is in need, in need of a charge. Alright, job done.